Be a part of the best pro wrestling podcast today by supporting the Going In Raw Patreon. You can enjoy access to the live taping of the show, exclusive merchandise, and patron-only episodes, and so much more. Support Going In Raw today. Click the link in the description. This is Charlotte, and you're watching Going In Raw. That sounds terrible. What's up? This is the most must-see WWE superstar of all time and his lovely, gorgeous wife. Marie. <laughs> and you are Going In Raw. What's up? It's your girl, Sasha Banks, legit boss, and you are watching Going In Raw. Oh, baby, I like it raw. Oh, baby, I like it raw. And you are tuned in to Going In Raw right now. How you doing? Hey, friend L. Steve here. Ed Larson. And hey, welcome to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Steven Larson. And available wherever fine podcasts are. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notify bell next to it. Make sure you're always getting your new Going In Raw content, right, Larson? Yeah. We're also available on the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Steven Larson, where uh, we, we don't we, we have three live streams every week. This is a free one for everybody. Though. Everybody. This is our weekly dirt sheet. Uh, everybody gets this one. Wrestling Weekend News Recap. We got some good stuff. We have audio. That's we have good. audio? Good step. Look step at that. In the right direction. Professional. Look at that. Social media. Boom. Joy of Bearding on the Twitters. That's at me. MF Steve here on the Twitters or at Real Going and Raw. On the Twitters, we're also available at Pro Wrestling Tees. Look at our newest shirt, Larson. Hey, 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 you're not me. For some reason, it's still listed as here as unlisted, even though I made it public. You're not, you're not me. Public. Why did I not make it public? So we're talking to only one person, two of us, actually. Uh, can you make it public now? I did tried to. Did you make to. it public? Yeah, see, public. Well, I think they can go back and watch the rest of it. Hey. Well, now they're just getting this right here. Hey. Well, I mean, that's what I'm, I'm trying to find out how to do it so it does it now. Well, you know what? That's but okay. It's not doing it. Uh, it's, as soon as I said we're professional, that's when it went off the rails. No, I noticed when we started, it's like, why is there only one person watching? Yeah. And right here, it quite obviously says public Yeah. on the privacy, so I don't know. I don't know, man. Look, crazy things happen all the time, Larson. You got to roll with the punches. That's what I've learned in life. You got to roll with the punches. Anyways. Um, how was your weekend? It was okay. <laughs> we were in the same boat this weekend. Yeah. We were running daddy daycares out of, this, yep. out of our respective, respective homes. homes. Yes. Yeah, exactly. My child is absolutely exhausting. <laughs> because here's the thing. I'm a, big, I'm a big play toy for her. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, okay, now it's being saved. There you go. Now is it going to be public? Sorry, we're off to a rocky start here. Oh my goodness gracious! Here, you. There talk. we go. Now we're public. We're oh, fine. Right. We're fine. Hey. Sorry about that, everybody. Hey, everybody! All you've missed so far, if you're just tuning in now, are our plugs and then me trying to initiate a conversation with you about parenting, which nobody really is here. No, to, to so you've missed to. nothing. Yeah. Anyways, let's get right into to rip off uh, what's his face, Keemstar. Into the news. Into the news. Holy crap! When you came over today, I was like, I don't, I don't really do any of the research for this news crap. That's all you. You're a good producer at that. Well, thank you. You're a good digital online producer. Thank you. If you, if you need a, like a uh, a recommendation uh, for a new job. Well, yeah, it'd be only if I... Digital online producer. Gained other employment. And then I could do this by myself and I'd get all the money yeah, myself. You're so eager to do this by yourself. You want me to no. either find another job... No way! Or, or pass away suddenly... <laughs> you mean die suddenly? Yes. Or Does anybody pass away suddenly? I feel like passing away... Is a gradual thing. <laughs> all right. Not oh, he passed away. I think it's just a gentler way. He got of hit saying. by a bus and freaking passed away. Yeah, this is a, 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 a kind of a gentler way of saying someone nobody, died. Nobody says I passed away violently. Anyways, this was this was a. I got you, you there. I, I stumped you fall there. Fall off a cliff. <laughs> I'm, I'm passed. Get stuck in another country. <laughs> he fell off a cliff and passed away violently. Listen, um, you came over and you were like, "Hey, PW Insider said that uh, Neville might be coming back to the WWE." Hey, oh, well, whoa. Maybe. Talk about it. What's so, going on? Yeah, PW Insider they had a report today. Literally, I noticed it right as I parked my car in front of your house. Yeah. Um, which suggests, as you said, that Neville could be in talks to return to WWE. And that's what they had to say. Hey, oh, quote, sources within the company have told PW Insider dot com. There have been recent positive discussions between Neville and the company. There is a belief among some in the company that talks have gone so well that Neville could actually be returning Ooh, to action for whoa. WWE before the end of the month. Oh, So that's about two more weeks. Man, that's great. Eight is great. I hope it's not 205 Live, even though I love that show. I feel like Neville doesn't need to be on there. I'll be honest. I kind of got my hopes up. We'd see him in New Japan. 
That's why I love Neville, Neville and WWE. I can't, I'm so eager to see what he can do. Yeah. I don't know. How old is Neville? He's like uh, mid 30s. Yeah, mid 30s, I would well, suspect. I'm going to say 35. I'm going to say 33. Oh, wow. Okay. You think that's young, huh? Um, I'd be Neville really. Neville Chamberlain. Really? No. That's not the right Neville. No. Neville Pock. <laughs> It's Benjamin uh, Satterly. Yeah, I know what his name is. You see, we're getting those stickers. The Friendo Care Package is finally coming together. Good. Yeah, I know it's. Um, I was thirty-one. Really... Wow, he's young. He's oh, young. there's plenty of time to see what he can do in New Japan. Yeah, man. Here's the thing: we don't watch New Japan weekly. No, we don't do that. I don't even know if we could do that. Do well, they, we do could they run weekly be, shows. On no, the... it doesn't. It wouldn't necessarily be their uh, recent programming. Have to go to their back catalog. If we want to make a living. We got to watch this. We got to watch WWE every yeah. single week. Yes, we do. So I'd rather he be on something that I'm watching every single <laughs> week than not. God, how oh, great would it that. be for him to come back to a huge response after Enzo said, "I ran that guy out of town." Yeah, I know. But that mean he'd be back on 205 Live. No, I don't want. I don't want that. I want to be on Raw, competing for the Intercontinental Championship. Same here. Wouldn't that be great? It'd be fantastic. I mean, here's the thing: he is has it... proved his heel bona fides. Man, he was fantastic. Yeah, he he he, he unlocked some hidden mic skill ability, mm-hmm. or at least he was given the opportunity to actually present his mic skills. Yeah. Um. And yeah, his run as cruiserweight champion was some of the best work of the entire year. I loved it. I just wonder if, you know, because Kalisto's there popping ratings. I'm firmly I am firmly convinced at this point that it's Kalisto popping ratings and not Enzo. Really? I really believe that. What is convinced that. you of that? Um because the timeline matches up and uh and when we were talking about it on the podcast, got a couple Twitter responses. You might have seen some of them. Um, one guy at uh I guess he's like a teacher of some sort. I forget okay. his name. Okay. Mentioned that when he talks about wrestling uh like with his students his young students they all want to be Kalisto. Interesting. Another guy said that Kalisto is a big star uh down in uh, b- below the border I guess south of the border. Mm-hmm. Um somebody else uh, refuted that or disputed that rather. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Maybe it's not Kalisto. Maybe it is Enzo. Maybe it it's is, just it's a, weird, it's, it's a it's a co- uh, confluence of events. A it's, perfect storm. It's a combination of both. Hey, can we just briefly talk about talk about perfect storm Tim Storm? Oh yeah, Billy Corgan bringing the NWA back to prominence. That look, I I'm legitimately sad. I'm really interested to see what he's doing. I'm legitimately sad that you and I couldn't just pop down to LA and I watch know. that match because something tells me that NWA Tim Storm stuff is just the beat and the Billy Corgan stuff. I think he wants to go by William Corgan now. Yeah, his musical career is William, whatever his middle name yeah. is, Corgan now. Yeah, yes. right. Um, but his Twitter handle still at Billy. Yeah, right. He can't ever get rid of that. Because no, it could. Who else is going to be Billy? Like, if I said, if I was just at Steve, if I started going by Steven, yeah. I couldn't get rid of at Steve. It's the only Steve out there. Yeah, it's treasured. <laughs> you know? Um wonder how he got. Did he sign up to Twitter, like, immediately? Jack is a massive Smashing Pumpkins fan. And got, I don't know. And got the at Billy. You'd think so, right? I don't know. I mean, geez. I would think that'd be a lot of competition for at Billy. Yeah, right. It just wouldn't be Billy. I mean, he maybe reached out to Twitter or the guy who has at Billy and said, I'll sing you a song on your. I'll cut uh, you a check. I'll cut you a check. Maybe I would. I would have done that just to have him sing like over my voicemail, like you know, Steve's not here. It's a terrible Billy Corgan. He impression. won't be here very long. He's like a gib. He'll be. Steve's not here, yeah. and he's not coming that back. Way more more gib than Billy Corgan. <laughs> Can I just? Uh, that's what I'm gonna make my outgoing. Uh, my outgoing message. Steve's not here, and he's not coming back. No, oh, I shouldn't have said gib. Because now you're going to do Gib the entire episode. Uh, so anyways, I think this is great. So wait, Power Rank. The no, fi- it's good. It's good. The I want, five I want brands back. he's going to come back to. Do you think, let me ask you something. Do you think he's coming back to 205 Live? Do you think they're actually going to talk to him and be like, look, let's hear what you, look, the, here's, let's hear what you have to say. Here's, here's the way they can Who's do this. Who's reaching out to him? Is it Triple H? Probably. Hey. Um, ben. Here's the way they can do this. He comes back to 205 Live. <clears throat> let me finish. Okay. Um, him and Enzo finish off this feud of theirs. Yeah. And I don't know how exactly, but mm-hmm. at the culmination of that feud, mm-hmm. uh, Neville transitions on to something on Raw. Yeah. So he's not on 205 Live anymore. Yeah. He's on Raw now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so there's, there's, they at least get to finish up the program between, I'm not saying this is going to happen in a matter of weeks. I hope in a matter of a, like a couple months, he shows back up, beats Enzo, gets that belt back. Something happens, so Enzo eventually gets it back again. Neville moves up to Raw. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm pretty much saying. Yeah. Not going to happen. Um, there's no way that he's going to come in and get the belt off the guy who seemingly might be popping ratings. 
Yeah, Enzo, I think, is a big part of that. Oh, yeah, but imagine if, if, as you mentioned earlier, Enzo was bragging about being the guy who uh, sent Neville out of town. Well, then Neville comes back. Mm -hmm. He's not gone. Yeah. Massive face uh, pop for Neville. I mean, that could, especially after Survivor Series, when I assume, or where I assume, uh, Kalisto's not going to reclaim that title off Enzo. You know where the perfect spot for Neville would be? NXT. Uh, no. Um, SmackDown. Uh, no, man. Taking on the Miz for the IC title. That's what he should be doing. Yeah, that's what happened after he does. He fin he wraps up this loose end with Enzo. Yeah, but the problem is it's not going to be Miz anymore. It's going to be Bronze. Yeah, I know. That's, that's a big problem right there. It's a huge problem. Yeah. Um, Send him to SmackDown. He can uh, yeah. compete for the U.S. title. Oh, I'd be I'd be totally into that. Him and, uh, him and Corbin? Yeah, him and Corbin. That'd be awesome. Yeah. They'd put on some decent Like a matches. tweener Neville against yeah. tweener Corbin. Mm -hmm. That'd be good stuff. Oh, tw Corbin's not a tweener. It'd be heel, heel Corbin. You can have a tweener versus a heel. Oh, that. I know. Yeah. <clears throat> But I think I think the Corbin's like mediocre mic work, yeah. especially his hey hey. I think I think hey. So for those who weren't uh, here for the shirt plug, hey, look at this new shirt. It's not a Baron Corbin shirt. It's just a wolf. But it, it's slow wolf. Could be a fox. Because here's the thing: I uh, I showed this shirt to my stepkid, and she said um, he looks like he has issues with his brain. He looks like he's slow. So he's slow wolf. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, without saying, I think. I but think, it's not a Baron. It's not an official Baron. No, just, I can't. Is this considered a parody shirt? Maybe. Like we make fun of him, so I made this shirt. Hey, hey. Pro I was going to say my Portland point Square. was because of that. Since we find him somewhat endearing, I can't take him seriously completely as a total heel. <laughs> Core Baron. Yeah. Oh, I do because I I I observe. I'm an observer of wrestling, Larson. It's really I'm, you can call me a wrestling observer, but you're not the wrestling. Observer. <laughs> there is only one wrestling observer. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I do I take him seriously? No, of course not, because we clown him all the time. But the people do. The people take him as a heel. No, I understand that. I'm not saying I'm not uh, saying that from anybody's perspective other than my own. Mm -hmm, yeah. It's like I don't take him fu as fully heel because he's kind of unintentionally goofy. Yeah. So I can't take him completely seriously as a heel. No, that's fair enough. I, I, see I your find point. his goofiness somewhat endearing. <laughs> yeah, I know. Me too. I pull for the guy. <laughs> same was kind of the same way I pull for Jinder. You know, I really wanted to see Jinder versus Brock. I kind of wanted to see it too. So let's talk about that really quick. Okay. Triple H over the nice weekend. segue. Triple H. I know I'm Mr. Segue, segue today. Guess so. Triple H over the weekend posted a video of him standing next to a boxing bag on Twitter on the Twitters, and he said. Uh, People of India, a lot of people are asking the game Triple H if he's going to come back to in-ring competition. It's not a very good Triple H. I find it funny that I'm not doing Better. a good Triple H right now. Yeah, no, your impression game is a little bit off today. So I'm going to challenge Jinder Mahal to the biggest match in India's history, the game Triple H versus Jinder Mahal. So let me know. Let me hear your voice in the comments. And with like the little like button, because like you get like 280 characters now, so you could like write a whole freaking paragraph yeah. to the game. But this is all in the video, telling me why I should fight Jinder Mahal. And then he says, "Are you ready?" Hey, India, are you ready? What if the people of India, like unanimously in the comments, in the ats, in the replies, rather, said, "I don't want this. This sounds like crap. Put the belt back on Jinder." This is, but this is huge for gender. This is an above yeah, title match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, we, I think we both said for Seth's match against Triple H at WrestleMania that it was, in a, in some sense, since it was a major storyline above titles. Yeah. Um, and yeah, this is a huge opportunity for Mahal to take on Triple H in India. And granted, he's not WWE champion anymore, but still, that's that's it's it's a huge step to be able to say, okay, I, I'm going to be in the ring with what the 13 time world champion, a future Hall of Famer, the guy who. You know, it has a hand in running the actual company. Well, here's the thing. And that this guy is probably going to lay down and do the job for me. If you and I. That's if pretty you, massive. Oh, you think. Yeah. Oh, Ginger's oh, yeah. winning. Oh, yeah, he is. Huh? I didn't even go that far. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's going to win. That's yeah. awesome. It is pretty cool. Good for him. Yeah. I have a lot of love for the modern day Maharaja. You know, I know you do, too. I want to I want to see him succeed. I want to see him do well. I just like, you know. We had that sort of a conversation not too long ago when somebody asked, hey, who's a main eventer who you can see on a pre-show a year from now? And it is kind of gender. And yeah. I, I don't want him to go there, man. I don't either. I, I like I, I mentioned this the other day, too. I mentioned this, I think, on our last SmackDown podcast. Um, If you were to take the... If you had booked gender exactly as you have booked him since he's been champion, only never put the belt on him in the first place, 
and he had oh, that yeah, feud yeah, with yeah, Orton, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he had that feud with Nakamura, and you built him that way, he would be like, I mean, that to me, that would have been like much, much more preferable because like, people yeah, would have taken him way serious, if they way had, more serious. If they had inverted his push, took him, I said, took him, uh, uh, and built him, yeah, in this fashion, and then pushed him up into the main event scene right now would have been, yeah, mm-hmm. it was pretty awesome. Yeah. And yeah, I think, I, mean, I think this is good for him. I, I, uh, it, interesting though, doesn't seem to be a split right now with the Bollywood boys. You know, he trashed them after he lost the title on SmackDown. But then in uh, responding to Triple H's challenge, he yeah. had the Singh brothers with him. Yeah. He accepted Triple H's challenge. So the match is going to happen, I believe, December 8th. It makes me, date. dude, it makes me wonder if now that the, you know, and his his title reign has come with mixed reaction. There yes. does there there is not one. Oh, it's crap. Oh, it's great. There's it's seem, been pretty polarizing. It's been pretty polarizing. A lot of people don't like it. A lot of people do like it. Um, and the creative for his run as champ has generally not been the best. Hasn't been great. But now that the seed is planted, that this guy had a six month run as top champion, I honestly think that in the minds of a lot of people, he's like legitimately. Up there now, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, a lot more believable as a main event. A lot more believable at the very least. Yeah. Um, so, but this seems like, you know, there was some speculation. Well, is he going to get the title after Survivor Series during this tour? Maybe during the tour. Seems no. Probably not. He might not get the belt back at all. When is so? This is going to be taking place when December eighth. So about two weeks after Survivor Series, two and a half weeks. And about two weeks before Clash of Champions? Yeah. Clash of Champions is... Mid-December, Mid-December. Okay. Might be the weekend before Christmas. Yeah. Might be the 18th, 19th, around there. Um, yeah, it seems like the odds of, of Mahal getting that belt back have decreased significantly. I mean, he's initially slated to defend the title against Kevin Owens during mm-hmm. this tour. Right. Obviously, that's not going to happen. Right. Um. So yeah, I mean, it, it will be interesting to see if he get. I mean, he will get a rematch. Mm-hmm. We got a maybe five pound, on the. Okay, go ahead. We got a five pound uh, super chat from Blade Sinclair, who seems to believe that Jinder won't win because Vince doesn't like talent winning in their hometown. Vince, I think I think he's going to make an exception in this. Vince case. likes money. I, there, there would be, and also Jinder is from Canada. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but I, I see both ways. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I see both. Ways. I know. Yeah, it's not like he's going to be in. Fear. Well, he kind of would be. Well, I, I still don't know. I still don't know if the India crowd has embraced gender. I don't know. That's, as that's, one of that's, their that's, own. that's a whole other discussion to have too. Is is you know by all accounts, AJ winning the title was a uh, kind of a rush decision. Mm-hmm. I mean, I thought I heard somewhere over the weekend that uh, AJ and Ginger found out day of mm. the title was going to switch hands. Apparently, really? it was done in response because ratings on SmackDown weren't good. Yeah. Um, but they booked the match like a couple days in advance. Yeah. Like the weekend prior. Well, no, it wasn't the weekend prior. So it was, I think they made the match on Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, the week, yeah, the week yeah, the week prior. Yeah, 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 yeah. the week prior. Um, but, you know, they might, they internally in the executive office at Titan Towers might decide who won the match. But that wasn't initially communicated from my understanding. From what I read. yeah. Until day of the talents involved. Oh, yeah, okay. I could see that. Um, so, I mean, they're obviously. Probably, they're this, always like the last. In the I know. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, the title change was a last-minute deal, um, and it's kind of a bummer for for Jinder to carry that belt for six months and be so close to this tour of India that's going to be massive, mm-hmm. potentially for WWE, and I'm sure for himself, mm-hmm. and then not not be able to carry that belt into that tour. That's going to be a bummer for him. I mean, he gets this match against Triple H, which is huge. Well, I think, I mean, you know, I think in any for any of those wrestlers... You know the, the 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 title means that you've done a, a decent job. They they have some. The title means they have a faith in the job you're. They have faith in the job that you're doing. Yes. And or so, your ability to do a job. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But I'll tell you this: he's got to feel a heck of a lot better now than he did a year ago. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? So he can't feel too bad about it. No, oh, I'm sure. He, I mean, this is. And he's know, and he's fighting Triple H miles away from what he was doing when he came back and it was even further away from what he was doing before he left. Mm, yeah, for sure. You know, the, the scene, the, the evolution of his, of his character work, especially, and you know how he's managed to advance himself within the company in such a short amount of time. It's been pretty impressive. Now that it appears he won't be dropping the title at WrestleMania to John Cena and granted, this is super premature. Yeah. 
that might be better for him. You know? Oh, I think so. <laughs> so. The worry would be that, you know, he has a match against Cena. And he's buried. Yep. Yeah, especially in the buildup. Because that's what we talk about. Like, Cena loves to bury people. I know. The, like, if you can't handle Cena on the mic, although that would have that, that been an interesting... Mahal has the presence. Who was the last guy that Cena... Oh, it was Corbin. Yeah, he buried the hell out of it. Buried the crap out of it. And Corbin doesn't have as intimidating a facade... No. As Mahal does, you no. know, like because Corbin's kind of goofy. He acts kind of goofy on Twitter. Yeah, you know, he acts he, he acts petty, and I mean that's part of his character is he's petty. Yeah, he puts literally the title in people's faces. I know that's great to rub it in their face, which is great. We love like petty's hilarious, but Mahal, granted, he was doing like the the racist shtick, which is obviously you know kind of low, but. He has, you know, between the Bollywood boys being with him, the fact that he looks like a million bucks, he's got the best face in the business. Mm -hmm. And his whole presentation is very, I mean, it's it's very it's very royal like, you know, it's very like this guy looks like a million bucks. Yeah. He presents himself. Yeah. I could see how it'd be. He might be able to withstand a scene of burial in the lead up. Perhaps more than some other people. More yeah. than Baron Corbin, I know. for sure. I, yeah, yeah, but but still to 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 deal with the burial on that large of a stage. Yeah. You know, if if you want to create a path to go from main eventer to pre show match, getting buried by Cena seems like perhaps a necessary stop. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, we don't want that to happen to Ginger. We want no, him to stick around at least in the mid card and be competitive and get chances at, at titles. And well, stuff. it also helps that SmackDown doesn't really like because <coughs> Bob, they didn't put Bobby Roode in the heel position, which they really should have yeah, in the top heel position. Um, there is, I mean, you know, barring and I hope they don't do another shuffle before Mania. You know, that's a good long time of gender being to being able to lay claim to sort mm -hmm. of top company heel mm -hmm. right now because mm -hmm. they only have. I mean, they got Rusev, but man. They, well, I mean, like on SmackDown, it's Owens and now Zayn as a as a mm -hmm. duo is kind of top heel, and then now it's gender is probably the two spot, and then Baron in the third spot. And if you look at those guys, like people love people love Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, even though yeah, they're heels. But people like in terms of true heels, it's yeah. Baron and Jinder. And I think Jinder is top, you know, above in the pecking order than than Baron Corbin. Well, obviously, I think so too. Yeah, because yeah, Corbin's got that U.S. title, right? Um, so it'll be interesting to see how this pans out. I, I fully expect him to to beat Triple H. It'll probably mm -hmm. be due to interference from the Singh brothers, and that's mm -hmm. fine. Um, although, I mean, maybe not. Maybe it depends if he goes in this match. Cause I th you know, initially when he was booked to face Owens defend the title when I read that I was like oh they're, he, they're gonna have him they're gonna book him as the face in those in that match mm -hmm. um, so, but maybe against Triple H they'll do it differently I don't know I don't know it'd be interesting to see what happens I'd be really interested to see what happens yeah I don't know I could see I could I, I would like to think that if they're going into India and they're using gender as their you know their ambassador if you will to the land that they would that they would do the whole he's a face in his mm -hmm. home in his mm -hmm. hometown thing mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. that would make the most sense that would have him go over, but who knows? I mean, I don't know if they have a read on how the uh, the fans, the WWE fans in India, feel about gender. If they give a crap, yeah, you know? no. I mean, from from what we've understood, there hasn't seemed to be any big metrics that have moved significantly with this gender experiment, if mm -hmm, you will. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Uh, interesting stuff. Yeah. Uh, speaking of interesting stuff, an interesting return has been confirmed. Well, probably, maybe she's at the that somebody took a shot of her. She's at the facility. Yeah, she's so, uh, walking from the parking lot again. PW Insider reported on Saturday that Paige. This is all spoiler alert. If you want to hear this news, you want to be surprised by something. Yeah, it's like if you're watching the live stream now, just stop. Yeah, it's give okay. us ten minutes. It's come all back. good. It's all good. Mute the audio, whatever. Uh, if you're watching this VOD, yeah. just skip ahead a few minutes. Yeah, right. All right, your spoiler has been alerted. Listen. Um, Paige is all set to return to WWE Again, spoiler alert. Tonight on Raw. Tonight on Raw. She's rich. So this is, again, according to PW Insider. And this is uh, contrary to what we uh, read a couple uh, a month or two ago. It was a while ago, but this, I said this was going to happen, Steve, a couple weeks ago. Okay. I said that she was going to be on Raw, and she's going to fill out the women's Survivor Series team. Okay. I said this, and yeah. you poo-pooed it. Yeah, sure. Eat crow. That's what PW Insider had that to say. That was an awfully angry statement you just made there. You're wrong all the time, and I never say, hey, Larson, F and you. Well, maybe you should. Never, maybe I will <laughs> from now on. 
This is what PW Insider had to say. Quote, the belief among several we have spoken with is that Paige will somehow end up on the Raw women's team. Um, of course, there is a triple threat match scheduled tonight on Raw between Bailey, Mickey James, and Dana Brooke. I cannot believe for a second that Bailey's not going to be on that team. Well, hold on. Uh, and, and that match is to fill out the final spot on the Raw Women's Survivor Series team. And uh, PW Insider states, quote, It's possible Paige is added to make it a four-way or WWE runs some other sort of angle to have Paige replace one of the members of the team. It's got to be Alicia Fox. Well, she's captain. Yeah, I know. How do you get rid of that? How do you do? I don't know how you can. Look at me. I'm the captain now. That's my favorite, Jeff. That's my, oh, hello. Oh, breaking news. New patron. Um, I can't believe that Bailey's not going to be on the team. There's one spot left. It ain't going to be Bailey. It's going to be Paige, man. No, I know it's going to be Paige. I'm saying Bailey's not going to get left off. We'll see. That'd be terrible. It'd be a bummer. It'd be a total bummer. They're going to. There's going to be some. There's got to be some shenanigans where Alicia Fox gets left off. Kind of weird that she was captain in the first place. Let me ask you something. What? When did was this the plan? When Alicia Fox became captain that night on Raw, <coughs> was it in the plans for Paige to show up and take this? What do you think the answer to that question is? No. Yeah, of course not. I think that's correct. They answer. had no idea that she'd be ready or not. Well, I think they'd have an idea that she'd be ready. So much of this is on the fly. Oh, yes. PW Insider followed up the following day. That would be Sunday, yesterday, to confirm that Paige was indeed in Atlanta, home of tonight's Raw. Um, so it seems that her return is probably going to happen tonight. Mm -hmm. Are you excited? It's been more than a year since she's been on TV. Yeah, man, I love Paige. I gotta find my Paige shirt. You I was gonna wear it, but I don't know where it is. I think I put it in the clothes for donation. But all those those bags are out in the garage. No, I, I still have go it. Go dig through some gotta bags. Gotta go. Gotta go get it. Do it, it. I I got. I did it when she was. I put it out there when she was suspended. I'm like, I don't need this shirt anymore. But now you now do. she's back and things are good. This is very exciting. <laughs> this is awesome. Um. So, yeah, are you excited about this? I'm excited about it. Yeah, it should be fine. Should we talk about how this affects Impact Wrestling? No, because it doesn't impact Impact at all. Sure it does. Are you kidding me? Of course it does. Alberto Del Rio is in the main event scene. He's not their champion. I understand that. This is going to set him off somehow. This is no, gonna... she says she's single now. Yeah, I know. This is going to set him off. Really? <laughs> he he's going to have a he chip probably... on his shoulder now? Yeah. He's going he's gonna to get on Periscope. After Ooh. having a, a few too many cervezas. Terrible idea. And uh, he's going to start running down Triple H in derogatory manner. Talking about big noses and whatnot. And then he's going to be t talking mean about Paige. And then GFW is going to have to go through this whole thing again. We're suspending him again, even though we've already shot eight months of TV. <laughs> you see that GIF, the GIF from the backstage yeah. brawl? Yeah, where uh, John Morrison launching himself. It doesn't make any sense. <coughs> Physically speaking, it's weird. Because, like, it's as if he's on a pulley system. Yeah. But then he's not. He's super athletic, man. But it's weird. Like, yeah. I get that. He's super athletic. No, I know the angle is literally like someone threw him. Like, he's a javelin. <laughs> but, okay, it's not just that. It's, here, this is what it is. There's no downward trajectory. No, I know. He comes in like this. That's what I'm saying. When you jump, it's only this. There's no period when you're like this. This is this is No, I understand that's what I'm saying. This it's is like, physically it's impossible. Like he, someone threw a javelin, not up. Right. Straight. Right. It's like he was launched like a missile. Yeah. I understand that. It's so weird. He's super athletic though. But that's not an explanation. Come on, lots of people are super super athletic. I know, but if he is if he began his jump just from right off camera and the camera is just positioned just so it can look Let like he just literally something. launched himself in somebody. Does Impact strike you as the type of production who knows how to place Not cameras necessarily, in the right but I, position? I have, I have faith that John Morrison knows what he's John doing. John Morrison definitely knows what he's doing. Um, anyways, yeah, I mean, Paige coming back. This is this is great. I, I mean, I'm I'm really happy. There was the distinct danger that she was gonna, you know, a wellness violation her way out of the WWE. I mean, yeah. it's, it's still possible. She's got two strikes on yep. it now, and they don't they don't those strikes don't come off. Nope, With ever. Jeff Hardy, I think, still has two yep. strikes. And he was gone for like 20 years. Yep. So those, anyways. Those are on your record forever. What? Do, I mean, do you think it'd be justified <coughs> not to have... Do you think it, it, would be, it wouldn't be odd to have Bailey not... On Raw, not on the Raw Women's no, Team. No, I am agreeing with you. It would be, it would be, it'd be weird. So fantasy book that crap, Dad. How's uh, that going to go down? This is how it's going to go down. Okay. Paige is going to get her way into this match. She's going to win. She's going to be on the team. Bailey won't. 
Um, so you think that's a possibility? It's a distinct possibility. Yeah. I don't know, man. It is a distinct possibility, Steve. People are saying Ed Cabo gave his $2 super chat said, Thank you. Bailey gets left off feeding her heel turn. Could be. Could be. And then another $2 super chat from Mr. Michael Law. He says, Power rank the best ways to turn Bailey heel. Number one, leave her off the Survivor Series. Yeah, that'd be a, that'd make her really upset. Yeah, no kidding. Right now, uh, oh, no, that's a spoiler. Never mind. I was reading PW Insider. So is there any breaking news? Oh, any more breaking news on Paige? On Bailey not being at Survivor Series? <laughs> <coughs> Let's talk about Raw tonight. You're talking about doing a do Raw preview? Raw now? preview. All right. Paige coming back. We already talked about that. I know, but there's more. That's Reigns not, is that's coming not, that's back. That's not official. Roman though. Reigns is coming back, though. That is official. Oh, yeah. Where's he been? He had the mumps. That's why he wasn't the at moops. TLC. Yeah, the moops. Mumps. The mumps. Um, and, of course, I'm guessing this to start Does setting just, up. Are you just fatigued? Does he just lay up in bed? No, you get your your, oh, your what? saliva glands get all swollen. So we get these, like, you get really swollen you right look here. like some weird creature from a Jim Henson workshop. Maybe. Yeah. But then it, the swelling goes down. Like a Cronenberg movie? I don't know. It's not to that extent. I don't Big think. dog. What if he? What if his new gimmick is going around coughing on people? <laughs> yeah. Where's Bray Wyatt? Yeah, that should be his gimmick. Yeah. But I, th- I don't think it's been confirmed what it, whether Wyatt had mumps or meningitis. Yeah, I don't know, man. Heard both. Anyways, anyways you know Reigns is back. Happening. And then apparently they're supposed to show up on the SmackDowns too. Yeah. The Shield. Yeah. Because they're going to make their actual Shield reunion debut at the Survivor Series against me. It's the only match yes. that hasn't been confirmed. Yes. Um, but it's going to happen. Yeah, that's totally going to happen. Totally going to happen. And they'll start setting it up somewhat tonight. Yeah. Uh, also, Lesnar and Heyman are supposed to be there to start hyping up. Brock versus AJ. Paul Heyman's going to take the, uh, you know. <coughs> is he going to take credit publicly for putting that belt on AJ? Oh, maybe. Yeah, that could be. I don't think he's going to break kayfabe to qu- yeah. quite to that degree. Yeah. don't think that's going to happen, Steve. I don't think it's going to happen. What's Elias going to do tonight? Probably more stuff with Jason Jordan. Yeah, Green Grocer, mm-hmm. Jason Jordan. Mm-hmm. I'm down to see that. Uh, also, Team Raw is going to respond to the announcement of Cena being on Team SmackDown. Sure. Because that is a that that's that's a pretty monumental change. Team SmackDown uh, helps uh, even out the balance of power between the two teams. Were they? I mean, uh, obviously, is Cena going to be on SmackDown Tuesday? He has to be. Yeah, right? he would have to be. Okay, I would think so. Why wouldn't they have just like? Because he's going to be the ref for the Mahal Lesnar match until that match wasn't happening. No, but why wouldn't they have made the announcement on TV to generate buzz? Well, they're probably unsure about everything, man. They don't plan ahead. <laughs> they, they don't plan. We mean like they couldn't call up Cena and say, "Hey, can you be at SmackDown on Tuesday so we can make this announcement?" Oh, I mean, we're gonna make him a big on the team on on team. Oh, okay. Like make a big deal about. Yeah, I don't know. And then is he, he gonna, is shooting a movie right now, so he could be very busy. Is he gonna explain? <laughs> is he gonna explain the Raw thing? He was just on Raw. He's a free agent. He said he can go wherever he wants. He's already said yeah, that. No, but you understand that brand versus brand denotes some sort of brand loyalty. He has no brand loyalty. Exactly. So why is he is him being on Team SmackDown? Like, what's going to be his rallying cry? Uh, hustle, loyalty, respect, probably. I don't know what that means. He'll go to Raw and say you That's can't see me. That's such an ab- abstract thing. I mean, this is this is just for him. Like, it's all the steps some program between him and somebody on Team Raw further down the line. That's for what him. It's for. for him in character, right? Yeah. This is just playing around. He yeah. doesn't care. No, he doesn't. He can go wherever he wants. Yeah. He just called up Shane and says, hey, I wanna, I'm want i not doing anything for our series. Can I be involved? And Shane says, yeah, you're John Cena. Sure. Well, it'd be the other way around. Shane's looking for somebody to be on the, the last member of his no, team. No, I feel like Cena takes the initiative. Yeah. Because he's like, I got a couple hours off from shooting a movie. I'm Shane was something. this close to just giving it to Rusev. Yeah. And then he got the call. Yeah. Shane, I talked to Vince. I'm on your team. Okay. But he never actually talked to Vince. He just says it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, he doesn't lie. He doesn't lie. He just calls him Shane. Uh, no, he says, Shane. Shane. I'm on the team. If my math is right, and it always is, you have four people, which leaves one person on your team. It's me. Click. Click. And then Shane's like, I think that was John Cena, but it looks like he got a new number. Well, one of my old friends like was in town, and she, uh, she texted me and said, Hey, dinner tonight? I'm like, I assume I know who this is. <laughs> but I, is this this person? And she's like, yep. I was like, all right, cool. 
Sorry, I can't. Wife's going to Vegas. <laughs> Sean Holver, $5. The Shield versus Miz and Cesaro and Sheamus has been announced for tonight. That's a good match. Who what now? Shield versus Miz, Cesaro, and Sheamus. Confirmed from Sean Holver. Yeah. Our new in, going in raw insider. Yeah. Low level rider, Sean Holver. For a five dollar super chat, you can be our insider as well. Yeah. Feed us misinformation. Wait, who's it again? Miz and who? The Shield versus Miz, Cesaro, and Sheamus. The Shields? Tonight's gonna be their official reunion show? Guess so. Or is Team SmackDown gonna come down and interfere in that match? That's what they should do. Yeah, right. Uh, that'd be a situation given people a, a, a match they should pay for for free. It's just me or this this like whole Survivor Series thing. <laughs> it started out great with the Under Siege thing. Yeah. Right? And then they, de- I mean, they've referenced well, it, obviously. They decide to reshuffle the deck several times. A lot. And it's going to be, a f- I mean, it's a, it's a great lineup. But in the meantime, it's just sort of been like a lot of Twitter announcements and like off-camera things happening. Yeah. So it's been like a weird buildup, but I'm I'm excited for. Are we doing? We're doing a live stream. Yeah, of course. For Survivor Series, yeah, it's a Sunday. It starts. Uh, the show starts at four o'clock rather than five. I think the pre-show starts at two. Okay. So we have to schedule when we're going to start. The wait, what? The, the pre-show sh- starts at two. Yes, and the actual show starts at four. It's going to be at least four hours. Are we long. sitting here for four hours at least. Can we get that office space in, by next Sunday? Well, I don't know. No, it's not next Sunday. It's this upcoming Sunday. Uh, well, next this the next. Yeah, you're right. If I say right now, if I say next Sunday, that kind of does mean the following it Sunday. Could be, it could be. The, it the, could be either one that we're yes. this early in the week. Yes. Yeah, I got you. So I just want to be clear: it's this upcoming Sunday. Man, we got to do a count out. Top ten things you're gonna see. At yeah, Survivor predictions series. video. Remember that time we predicted the bar was gonna. We said up? that several times. We should do that again. The end of the bar. We should. Anyways, time to take some questions. Yeah, let's take some questions. We have some time to fill in the <laughs> podcast. Let's get some questions. I'm going to go back in time. Mr. Uh, Mr. Hunt here, 87, tried to trick me with his name, says, I feel as though Rusev should have had Jinder's title run. Agree or disagree? I kind of disagree. I think that they made a big star to Jinder. Yeah. Like when you can create something huge out of nothing, that's a, that's a big deal. I don't think Rusev would have really been in much a different spot if he Dep- had a six-month it, it, title. It, it, a lot of it depends on the creative I know uh, Rusev can be uh, really entertaining, but if the creative stinks, it would still oh, stink. Yeah, hold on. Fantasy book this. Justin Nota Bartolo says Cena could turn on Team Blue. There's zero reason for that to happen. That's, I mean, he's all about hustle, loyalty, respect. Right, exactly. Loyalty. Loyalty. Yeah. Right, and yeah. while he might not be loyal to any brand in the grand scheme of things, mm-hmm. that night when he sports Team Blue, he is Team Blue. It would be disrespectful yes. for him to te- turn on and Team to turn Blue. on Team Blue – would be lacking honor. Oh, it's hustle, hustle. Dude, respect, it's hustle, hustle. Sorry. Yeah. Well, that would be hustling. He would, yeah. I got my H words yeah, confused. Yeah, it'd be yeah. But I feel like his hustle is more like just working hard. I think hard. it was <laughs> honor. Honor said but, hustle. You've been watching that Star Trek. I finished up the oh, yeah? Discovery last night. They had the mid-season finale. Yeah, I love it. It's yeah. really good. Like yeah. I hated the first two episodes. Yeah, I remember, I remember you said that. But by this uh, mid-season finale, it was really good. It's good stuff. I recommend it. I'm still I really do a Star Trek. I'm podcast, still really dude. like mucusy. I don't know why. Would you guys want to? I got a thousand people watching. Press the number one if you want to see Steve do a Star Trek podcast. I'd do it if it, we were just talking about Wrath of Khan the whole time. Um, well, you can be on my Wrath of Khan special. I'm a Wrath of Khan expert. Um, yeah. Well, I'm, I was thinking of getting Big Jim. Oh, that's good and choice. we would start with Next Generation and just every episode we do a podcast. I know a decent amount about Next Generation. I've seen every episode. It'd be fun. Yeah, it'd be fun to bring you on <coughs> for special episodes. Yeah. You know what I'd call the podcast? Four Lights, the Four Lights podcast. Well, you need would be if you'd call it that. There should be four hosts. <laughs> oh, that's too many people. It's a Steve Show, man, and then Big Jim's there too. No, oh, okay. And then I'll bring you on for the Wrath of Khan special. Uh, and then for like some of the goofier episodes, I'll bring you on. I would be on the one about the the REM sleep one. You let me know which episodes you want to be on or not, and you'll be on there. That episode was awful. <laughs> Look at that. A couple twos. Couple someone twos. Says, someone says Peyton Royce for some reason. <laughs> Peyton Royce is not an option. Do people want Peyton Royce on the Star Trek podcast? You think she likes Star Trek? God, I'm looking at the stream. I look so tired. Do I look tired to you? You know, you've been in a peppy mood today. You actually, you're not sick. No, well, I mean, I'm still you're a little, but you're not like miserable sick. No, you've been miserable. I don't think sick I ever was long. really 100 percent miserable sick. Maybe a couple days. Oh, you were pretty miserable sick. <coughs> if that wasn't 100 percent miserable sick, I don't want to know what miserable 100 percent miserable sick is. Lots, hey, so any lots more of questions? People, lots of people. Oh, if Paige is the Sean Holver, if Paige is the final member. Will she and Asuka 
Asuka, both be survivors for Team Raw or will Paige get pinned? That does present a fairly significant problem. Shouldn't Asuka and Paige both be completely protected? Uh, I don't know if Paige has to be completely protected. Can you get a count out? Yeah. You'd be counted out? Yes, you can be DQ'd too. All right. I believe since it's just it's it's not you know like a fatal it's not a tornado tag match. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think there's still disqualifications of counters. Yeah. <coughs> uh, Lone Seeker, do you think do you guys think Alistair Black could someday be the face of the company? Hell yeah, I do. Or I'll just say hell yeah in my mind I do in my dreams I do. Are you kidding me? Absolutely, probably not though. They'll be really successful. I don't I don't know about face of the company successful. Yeah, probably not. But man, I don't he's know if so cool. Know if there's anybody in NXT that's that's that could be face of the oh, company? Oh, Drew for sure. Drew. I know. I mean, I think he could if if this was his first go around. But I don't know. I don't know if the, if they really think, you I think if, the past is Sully Drew? No, I don't know if it's necessarily sullied him because he's doing great work now. I think what he's doing now is what ultimately matters. Remember what Vince called him the chosen one? Yeah, I know. I think they had high hopes for him back then. Oh, they obviously. I'm did. sure Vince is very happy to have him back. I, I think I, I don't want to make it seem like I don't think Drew is a deserving face of the company candidate because I do. I just don't know if they would think. He, well, here's here he would be. It, well, let me ask you this, and I'm not being snarky. Why? Because here's my counter to that. They thought Sheamus could be the face of the company. Yeah, and that's why I think that they totally because somebody was bringing this up. Um, I might have been our friend over at Forbes. I forget who, but they were talking about um, <coughs> who was talking about the Roman experiment failing or something like that. Um, <coughs> and me. they were saying there doesn't seem to be anybody else. And they're talking about Drew. And I was like, Drew, I think Drew would actually be perfect even in their minds. Yeah. Because number one, he's eight feet tall. Yeah. He is literally the most manly person you've ever really seen in is. your life. He is literally the most affable, likable guy, yeah. personable guy. And on top of that, He's Scottish. I don't know. I just feel like, given I know, I don't necessarily Sheamus is Irish. Think but still. they're going to hold his past, mm -hmm. you know, his first run against him. But with the whole chosen one thing, they might be skittish to, even in any sort of Im uh, ambiguous way, approach something like that. Whereas having you know, like anointing him top guy again. Oh, see, I think the fact that it, I mean, it, it would make an interesting story if. He, he, he was the chosen yeah. one, came back, left, came back around, and ended up being yeah. top guy. I think that's a fascinating the kind only, of redemption the only thing story that I, in a way. The, the, I think the only thing that I could see with your point is them not wanting to make, although we've kind of already seen this not be the case with gender, a guy used to be a three-man band guy because people can look back and look at how goofy he is. But nobody's done that. I mean, some people have done that with gender, but mainly it's, man, look at how these how far these guys have come. Yeah, I know. I think if they, the fact that they try to make gender the face of at least their India extension, um, and they made him WWE champion, I think that alone gives all the reason, all the evidence to support that they could totally see Drew as, as the, the head oh, guy. I think it'd be great. Cause he's so freaking likable. Yeah, he's fantastic. Fantastic. He's great. Um, Mr. Jacobs, what do you think they will do with the Velveteen Dream once he's moved up to the main roster? I'm not optimistic, man. I'm not especially on SmackDown. But, man, I love him. I think he's, oh, he's so great. great. Here's, here's what would kind of need to happen, and I think we're already seeing this with, with his <coughs> feud with Aleister Black. We need layers to that character so that when he comes in, it's not a matter of, oh, what can they do with him? It's who do we want him to go up against? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Because, like, with Bobby Roode, we loved him as a heel because of who he was, but there wasn't a lot of layers there, you know? He there said, was enough to keep him interesting, though. He said, well, he said all the right things as a heel. He's, his promos are always good, but it was like, what he you know he clowns Roderick Strong's family and that's the only thing I really remember from his heel run besides his really he had really good matches yeah and I think I think his combination of, of his mic work plus his his I always called him a tactician in the mm -hmm, ring yeah he always seemed to have a strategy and a counter what anybody had to offer him a combination of those two things because a lot of times when a heel drops mic work like Bobby Roode did far too often you get. Someone might be a little bit more of a cowardly heel. Mm, yeah. And he was never booked that oh, way. Oh, I know. I and that know. was great. I know. He when opportunity presented itself, he took advantage. Well, we liked we we liked <laughs> how he was we, we liked that aspect, how he was presented, and the fact that it's Bobby Roode and we've always liked him. Um, and we've always wanted to see him come up. But in terms of and it, it it's the same thing with Finn Balor. That was always your problem with Finn Balor. It's like, who really is this guy? Yeah. We never got any like real layers with him, no. you know? 
And with the Velveteen Dream, I feel like they can we can really get that. Oh, I know. He, know? he probably needs to stay in NXT for another year so they can g- for sure, yeah. give him layer upon layer upon layer to yeah. his character. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, somebody asked, uh, James Turney asked, yeah, why did ask WWE sign Leo Rush and not King Ricochet? Ricochet uh, can't sign with the company due to the nature of his Lucha Underground contract until January 18th. Speaking of which, you see they're bringing it back? It was confirmed yes. they're bringing it back season for season four. Yeah, four. yeah that surprised me. Mr. Michael Law has a super <laughs> chat. Do you think Baron Corbin should get a stable? Hey, look at the shirt. Wolfpack. Look, hey, you're not me. No, he's a lone wolf. He's slow wolf. No, this is slow wolf. That's he's slow lone wolf. wolf. He's yeah. a lone wolf. So, no, he shouldn't be in a stable yeah, We have at to all. watch our IP. Yeah. Our cop, our trademark issues. Yeah, he's a lone wolf. He, no stable for him. No, no stable for you, sir. Yeah, for Ricochet, it was, it was really just a situation where he legally he cannot sign with any uh, American promotion that broadcasts on television until yeah. middle of January. I want to say January 18th, but the mm-hmm. date could be off. Do you think, uh, what's the crowd reaction going to be like for Paige? Are they going to give her any guff? Where are they tonight? Atlanta. Atlanta. I think they'll they'll be cool. Yeah, I think a vast majority of people just be cool. excited to see her back. Yeah. I'd like to hope that if one guy, one guy starts chanting something unseemly, the rest It'll will get shout him down. down. Yeah, yeah, I hope so, too. I like whenever I see that, man. I like when people yeah. get shut down. Same here. Just in general. Uh, power rank, your top five most iconic weapons. Wrestling weapons. Uh, Triple H's sledgehammer, Sting's bat. A stick from the bring your own weapons yeah. match in Supreme Pro Wrestling. Yeah, a stick. Yeah. It's more um, a tree branch. <laughs> well, Brian Tannen called it I know, it called it a stick, stick, but it was a tree branch, yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll put that number three. Okay. Um, didn't, uh, didn't somebody use like a prosthetic leg? Hasn't a prosthetic leg been used a couple times? Yeah, that's been, that was used, uh, I think during, I want to say it was during Shawn Michaels and Sid's feud. Yeah, that sounds right. That sounds right. I can't remember whose prosthetic leg it was. Was it like a rant, like a plant fan? (sighs) No, I'd say it was a former wrestler that was in the crowd. Really? Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. What other weapons have been used? Alex C says Socko. Dirty oh, yeah. sock is a devastating Socko. weapon. Socko. <clears throat> I mean, I would say Triple H's sledgehammer through the oh. history of wrestling is probably the most destructive. Oh, absolutely. Weapon. It's, it's the most protected and over weapon. Um, Jake the Snake, Snake. Yeah. Just the, a random steel chair, too. Yeah, but when that when that thing <coughs> bit Macho Man, that's dark, man. That's messed up. That's like too violent for me. I shy away from that level of violence. Well, like you don't snakes. like snakes either. <laughs> snakes freak me out, dude. I don't like that. Oh, apparently Eric Young beat a guy with a prosthetic leg in TNA as well. Oh. Yeah. Lots of good. Lots of good. Uh, Al Snow's head. That's a good one. Yeah, that is good. Yeah. It was Mad Dog Vachon's leg. That's, that's right. That makes sense. That that's totally right. makes sense. Yeah. Thoughts on AJ Anton uh, Yanakiev asks, uh, thoughts on AJ versus Lesnar? I still would have rather seen. I'm, I'm, I'm saying this. I still would have rather seen Gender versus Brock because I think mainly because I think Gender deserves it. I think he deserved it. You know. Now what is he going to do with Survivor Series? He's going to cost AJ the match. Yeah. He needs to show up. Yeah, he's going to cost AJ the match. Yeah. Okay. Guaranteed. Yeah, but come on. Are they going to book AJ stronger than Brock? Are, are they going to give us the idea that AJ? Boy, could you? That's going to be a hot crowd. If they actually book AJ to make us believe that he has a chance of beating Brock, I know. which I think they could, I think they well, could they, totally do. I think do they that. have to do it. Yeah, right. They really have to do it, and I think, you know, uh, do you see him and Nakamura going at mm-hmm. it? Oh, ah, oh, give me AJ Nakamura. Yeah, that's gonna happen too. You want to reconsider going to Mania this year? Nope. Oh, okay. No, nah, man, I want to be sitting in our new office space, mm-hmm. right? Just chilling there. Bring Hilton down. Hilton lives nearby. Yeah, Hilton, come on down. He'll sit there. I don't do nothing. I was going to eat pizza the whole time. For seven hours? <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, you thought you were uncomfortable there last year. If you have seven hours worth of pizza in your belly, you're going to be super uncomfortable. Binge and purge, man. Oh, God. Yeah, dude. <coughs> Absolutely. Um, do you think, uh, Alex C., do you think Vince considers AJ his top guy? Not the top guy, but his go-to guy. He'd have to, right? The guy is money. He's box office. And he's the best wrestler maybe in the world. Uh, Angel Master 765, how powerful is Jeff Jarrett's guitar? Not powerful enough to put people in seats. Yep, couldn't draw a dime. Um, Matthew Williams Esquire, what do you think of Corgan's rollout for the new NWA? And are you sad to hear they are ending the affiliates? 
No, I'm not sad about it because I'm not sure. I mean, I don't know this for a fact. I'm not sure how much the NWA name, and I don't know, but speaking as a fan for me, you know, when I saw championship wrestling from Hollywood was NWA championship, I didn't really care. Yeah. I think it's, (coughs) if you're using that, I just, I, I, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Yeah, I, really I don't, don't necessarily think it's that, that huge of a deal. I'm not either. sure how much of a draw the NWA name is. I know. If you're an indie promotion, um, I just, I, I could be wrong. Maybe some places in the South where it was such a big deal, maybe there is some legacy value yeah, there. There. Could be. there could be. But out in LA, you know, championship wrestling from Hollywood is like the, like the fifth, you know, best or the, the fifth most buzzed about indie promotion in the Southern California area. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's nowhere near the level of a PWG. Um, now that if, if, but I, I assume is, <coughs> is championship wrestling from Hollywood is, cause that was where the match took place. I don't know what his plans are for. Yeah, I don't know either. Having that be like a central, like his home base. I haven't watched the, all the 10 pounds of gold stuff. No, right? I haven't either. And then he was on the Joe Rogan podcast. I got to listen to that, but I'm really fascinated by that stuff, mm-hmm. man, because mm-hmm. the fact that he's really playing up the history and then he has like the, the, what is it? Houston Tape Library? I forget the name yeah, of the yeah, family yeah, 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 yeah. to to do stuff with. Yeah. Um, I think it's fantastic, man. That's great. Uh, Fred the Shed, any TV shows you guys would recommend? You Star watch more, Trek Discovery. You watch more TV than I do. Um, I watched the uh, HBO Spielberg documentary over the weekend. Oh, wasn't it good? It was all right. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. So you haven't watched Fargo, season one and two? Oh, and three. Yeah, they're all good. Um, I'm just trying to think of shows that I've watched. Lacey's in the room right now watching Outlander. Oh, yeah. It's a time travel. Yeah, my wife really likes that one. Period piece. You know what's dope about it? Ronald D. Moore, the writer from Deep Space Nine Uh and Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. It's like like his baby. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's got like cool sci-fi ideas to it, but then it's all wrapped up in mushy romance stuff. And it shows boo-boos in it. Can't go. You know what they had on Star Trek Discovery last night? The first time I've ever seen female Klingon nipples, they showed Klingon nipples on a woman. I am not joking. Huh. Crazy. They also dropped the F-bomb on it. I know you mentioned that. I didn't know they that were... That was kind of dumb. They were... They were so out of place. They were doing that much more of a mature Star Trek. Yeah, it was, it was like a sex scene, and it was like the camera was overhead, and so you see her boo-boos, right? And then you distinctly see Klingon nipples. Hmm. Weird. Hmm. Really weird. Uh, Rain Wilson makes a good... Uh, What's his name? Mud. I forget his first name. Harcourt Mud. Mm. He was in the original series. Oh. Because this only takes place 10 years before original series. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm a flipping nerd. You man. are a nerd. I'm trying to think what other shows I've been watching. What did we just finish? We just finished something. <coughs> it's always a bummer when I finish something really good. Speaking of finishing, finishing things really good. We are officially at uh, podcast length. Yes, we're over 50 minutes here on the show. Where's my Where's my button for the music? Probably where it always uh, is. Out music. Let's see if it fired up. There should be some music happening right here in a moment. Your, your music player is up. Yeah. Whether it's playing or not, we don't know. We'll find out. Anyways, thanks for watching. Until next time, we'll talk to you guys later.